we are continuing to discuss the general principles of fast swimming, and we are discussing timing. And this week, we are going to talk about arm to rotation timing. And so there's a lot of different ways that people discuss this. Um, to me, I think it comes down to something that's pretty simple, and that's um, if you try to get your arm out of the water without rotating, your shoulders do not have the range of motion to do that. So basically what rotation is doing in freestyle and backstroke is allowing for more range of motion in the shoulders to either recover the arms, particularly in freestyle, get a little bit more out of the stroke in freestyle, and in backstroke, putting the arm in a position where it can actually effectively pull because if you don't rotate, your hand can't really go under the water. And if your hand can't go under the water, you're not gonna be able to pull very effectively. And so rotation is pretty much just making up for range of motion in the shoulders so that the arms can be positioned in ways that allow for effective recoveries and effective propulsive patterns. And so that's ultimately what rotation is doing. And we're gonna take a look at how that manifests in both freestyle and backstroke. And as we'll see, freestyle and backstroke are pretty different in terms of how rotation actually works in terms of the timing and in terms of how it changes or doesn't change. So that is what we will take a look at today. So the first way freestyle is different from backstroke is that backstroke timing tends to not change very much whether someone's swimming at an aerobic effort or whether they're swimming at maximal effort. And in contrast, freestyle timing changes pretty dramatically. You go from an overlap stroke where both arms are kind of in the same quadrant at one time to the sprint stroke where they're actually kind of in opposite positions throughout the entire cycle. So we're going to look at freestyle in terms of someone swimming a mile and then also in terms of someone swimming a 50 freestyle so we can compare those differences. And those represent the extremes. And then in between, you kind of see a transition from one to the other. So rotation timing here, the biggest thing to see is that rotation doesn't occur until the hand enters. And so the hand enters right here, and that's when rotation happens. And then on the other side, hand enters, rotation happens. And so the rotation happens after the arm recovery. And so when the arm is or someone the shoulders up, it's a lot gonna be a lot easier to recover the arm. And so it stays in that position. And then once it enters, that's when the body shift really happens. And so arm recovers, arm recovers, then the rotation happens, arm recovers, then the rotation happens. Now what stays the same between freestyle and sprinting and in distance swimming is that is that the rotation of the body is tied to when the pull happens. And so as the pull happens, you're always going to see the body rotating there because that allows for the maintenance of hand speed and allows for a little bit longer pull as they go through. And so you see here the timing of the arm always tied to the timing of the rotation when pulling. And that's how the timing changes between distance freestyle and sprint freestyle is that the rotation is delayed as the arm recovers and then it enters and then the rotation happens but it always coincides with the pull. Now we'll take a look at sprint freestyle. And so you see here, the arm is pulling and he's rotating there. So again, the rotation is always synced up with the arm pull. But what's different here is that as the hand enters, he's already rotated to the other side. And so in this case, the rotation happens during the arm recovery as opposed to after the arm recovery in freestyle. And that's the primary difference in the timing. And so the reason that that happens is it allows the arm to start to pull right away. So instead of having to enter, rotate, and then pull, the rotation has already happened so that the arm can be placed into the water in position to pull immediately. And so you can see there's the opposite timing here. The arm is in the front, the arm is in the back of the stroke, and both arms are moving. Now the other arm's in the front, the other arm is in the back of the stroke. So again, the timing is pretty simple. Rotation happens during the pull, and then when sprinting, the rotation is also going to happen as the arm recovers over the water, so that when swimmers enter the water, they've already rotated. And that's in contrast to distance freestyle, where the arm recovers, it enters, and then they rotate forward. And that's also why swimmers are able to swim much faster with sprinting, because there's no delay in propulsion. So right here, you can see it's creating propulsion, creating propulsion, creating propulsion. And that left arm stops, and the right arm is already creating propulsion. And so it's much more continuous, and that's by changing the timing of the rotation, swimmers are able to do that. And then if we go back to the distance freestyle, 
So he just finished creating propulsion there. There's none, there's none, there's none, there's none, there's none. And now we start creating propulsion. So there's a gap in between those. And so that's the big difference between sprint freestyle and distance freestyle. The rotation is still tied to the arm pull. What happens in sprint freestyle is that the rotation happens as the arm recovers. So they can get right into it right away. And then in distance freestyle, the arm recovers. And then the rotation happens, which creates a little bit more of a pause in the stroke. So not super complicated. It's pretty simple. But if swimmers aren't getting that timing right or they're using the wrong timing for the event that they're trying to swim, it's going to be more difficult and they're going to struggle. Now, backstroke. So I want you to pay attention to this Nike sign on the swimmer in the middle. And so as you see here, he has just started to get take his pull. That Nike sign hasn't moved at all. It still hasn't moved. Now it's moved and he just finished his stroke. And so backstroke rotation is not continuous. It happens as the arm recovers and as the other arm finishes. But then during the pull, during the entire pull, there's little to no rotation. And the reason for that is because in order to get the arm in a position to create propulsion due to the limitation of the shoulder range of motion, that shoulder needs to stay down. The body needs to stay rotated to that side a little bit so that they can get a really good pull throughout the entire stroke. And then at the last second, they rotate out of that so that they can switch to the other side and execute a really strong pull on the other side. And you'll see, you can see it's all of his back. You can see the tag on the back of his suit. It's not moving, it's not moving, it's not moving. And then it moves as he finishes the stroke. And now our Nike sign is back on our side. It's staying, it's staying, it's staying, it's staying, it's staying, it's staying, and then it rotates away. And so again, backstroke rotation is not continuous. It's intermittent and it's violent when it happens. So he goes from on his side and then snaps over to the other side right away. And we'll take a look what's happening over the water too. And that's tied in. When that other arm, watch the arm recover here or enter here and snaps in. And that's also sh shifting from side to side. So backstroke rotation is not continuous. It's intermittent and it's violent. And so if swimmers are trying to be continuous, they're going to get themselves out of position to create propulsion with that arm. Again, he needs to stay on his side so he can keep that position. Just think about it. If he starts to rotate away, all that space in that armpit where he's closing down, where he's moving water backwards from, that's all going to disappear. And so by staying on his side, he can keep the muscles that are creating all that force lengthened. And that's what's really key in backstroke timing is making sure that that rotation is delayed on that side so that they can get as much out of each stroke as possible. There the Nike sign switches. Now we can see the tag on the other side and then boom, it switches at the end. Now, just to show you one more example, she's on her side. You can see she's not moving. She's not moving. She's not moving. Pulls all the way through, still hasn't rotated and then switches and now stays on her side and then switches. So there's a delay. So there's a delay so that they can create as much propulsion as possible. And they have to delay that rotation because the shoulder isn't equipped to get behind the body. And this is the only way they can get the arm deeper and lower so that they can get a great pull. And so we'll take a look at it over the surface. As you can see, when the hand enters, that's where that rotation happens. And so that's coinciding with the finish of the other stroke. And so, and then they smash over to the other side and then they get quickly over to the other side. And so those two are actions are happening at the same time. They're staying on their side. And then when they finish the pull, that's when the hand enters and that throws them from side to side. And so, and again, it's an intermittent rotation, but it's a violent one. And that's what allows swimmers to swim really fast is because they can quickly shift from position to position so that they're not spending any time not creating propulsion. Because if they're able to stay on one side as long as possible, they need to quickly get over to the other side as fast as possible so they can create propulsion with the other stroke. So the arm to rotation timing in both strokes is ultimately pretty simple. It's to make up for the lack of range of motion in the shoulder. So in freestyle, you can't recover the arm out of the water if you don't rotate. And in backstroke, you can't pull with the arm under the water if you don't rotate. And then in freestyle, the rotation also has the benefit of helping athletes get a little bit more out of each pull. And then in backstroke, the rotation also has the benefit of allowing athletes to throw their arm over the surface and use that to help them to switch from side to side to make that rotation a little bit more efficient. So while it looks like there's a lot going on, it seems like it's pretty complicated. When it comes down to it, arm to rotation timing is ultimately pretty simple. And once we have a simple understanding of what it is, 
It makes it a lot easier to find solutions to help athletes learn these skills.